Hi there and welcome back. I'm Simon and this is a game called Skyliners. It's by Hansen Gluck and it's a quick game about trying to build the best skyscraper that dominates and, shall we say, oversees every other skyscraper in town. Now, this game is a bit tricky to put away to a degree just because these cars kind of splay loose. They don't get dented or anything or bent, but it's a bit tricky as it is. Everything is played inside the box, so we're going to have to put this back on in a second. So I'm just going to grab out, I might play as a two, as an example. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, just whilst it's setting up, I'll tell you about duration. So it's, it says half an hour on the box. It's, I think, eight minutes, to be honest, I think, including explanation and packing away. It's, it's not very long at all. So I'm going to grab out a few pieces, and I'll try out uh, a couple of different colours. So let's use, well, we can do two. I think it works with two. I'm going to use some of these bird marker things. I think one's enough. So we're going to chuck this in here. This here is for the main game or the advanced game. I'm just going to show you the basic game. So put that away. You're going to have this as well. What's going to happen in this just briefly is you're going to get uh, a requirement or you're going to try and meet a requirement. If you've heard of a game called Camel Up, it's similar. They're trying to predict how well something's going to go. So in this instance, you place a card sort of face down, but basically it's something like this saying, I wish, I believe that C3 is going to be a certain height or something to that effect. So we're planners, we are architects, and we are building um, cities out here. So in the bag is all the cards that you need. It's not too many. And let me just chuck out these cards. So again, these kind of cards you don't need in the game, at least for the basic setup. Pop those away. Oh, I've another bag. Okay. You've then got these cards. These cards are where we're going to start. So there are, I believe, uh, only a few cards which are the starting cards. And we have cards here which represent our secret objective. So you shuffle these up at random. And say so my objective is this one. I want to be in the east and south. So here's south, here's east. It's always going to be one, two, three, or four. And you're trying to get the highest point in that place and you'll get some extra victory points. Now, what will happen is somebody else is going to be either here, here, or here. Either way, if I start building here, I'm encroaching on someone who's east and north. Now, if they are also uh, here, then they'll be happy to work with me on the central stack. What's the downside of the central stack? We'll see in a moment. But as you can see, I'm going for that one. Put these back in the bag, these huge bags it comes with, and then uh, you're gonna start with these cards as well. So, I'm just going to uh, make a bit more space. As you can say, this is the size of the box. There's nothing else we need. I'm just gonna tidy up a bit around the edge because I don't think you need to see all this stuff in play. So I'm just gonna pause for a moment. Okay, so you'll be placing out some uh, foundations initially. So as an example, these represent foundations, these white ones. So initially, these are going to be laid out according to uh, certain cards. So this will tell you on here what you can be laying out. Before I go into the rest, I'm just going to tell you about other things that are present in your uh, arena. So depending on the number of players, you're going to start off with floors, basically it's things to make a tower. So in a two player, I believe it's 12 tower blocks you can have. In fewer players, you can have fewer tower block or floor pieces. So as you'll see, uh, these do fit on here. These also fit on here. So it's a nice starting point and this can go on top. You can make a roof, which can go on top as well. I could put, uh, someone else can go here and I could do that. But most importantly, you can't put anything on top of uh, a roof. So you start off with two of those roofs and you can't put a park on top. So everything works quite well in that respect. So you could do something like that. You could place down a park on your turn instead. You can place down, um, well, you could place, you can't even place a roof. So you've got to place a minimum of one floor. So on your turn, you must place down a floor. You can place a second floor. Instead, you could place down a park. Of course, a park is nice, gets a nice low view. You could also place down, instead of a second floor, uh, you could place down a roof. Of course, you could place a floor somewhere else. 
So the aim of the game is to have the best skyline. It's called skylines because you're trying to get the best view, best view possible. So that doesn't really work. Let's do it on the side like that. So you've got an idea of the game and maybe bring it forward a little bit. That'll be enough. Cool. So the idea of the game is to try and get the best view possible. So in this instance, if I'm going this way, I have a view of one because there's nothing below it. But if I happen to go here, at the end of the game, I'm going to score more victory points because I can see further. I can see all this stuff. If I do this, that's not good for me. I'm only going to score one point in that plane. So you're going to score one, two, three, four, five based on where you're sat. So I'm going to be sat in the north face. You could have somewhere on the east face, the west face, and the south face. So you're always going to be sat in that orientation. In terms of where you sit, I think it's not an issue. It's, it's never affected gameplay, and I've played it two, three, and four. If you have a park, of course, that could be quite nice to place near you because suddenly it's okay to do that. You're immediately getting some victory points and you're stopping somebody such as uh, someone over here from wanting to build a thing here because they're not going to get a victory point for it. And it could even help you. So you'll get nothing if there's just foundation works down the bottom here. So on your turn, it's very swift. You're placing out two things. Then yellow could go and do something like this. It won't aid them because it's the same height. They're just seeing the first thing they see. It's as if, yeah, it's as if it's not present. But they could do that. You can always build on top of, some, on top of somebody else. And uh, that's of interest because if it's going for a secret objective, which is why I left it visible, uh, I might want to try and focus on this. So building high here is good for me because I'm at this end and I'm trying to build vertically um, at the back, shall we say, because I'm going to get the be best view possible. So the game's going to proceed and uh, you're going to be chucking things out until someone's placed out their last floor. So that's when the game ends. So you could rush the game and just place out loads of floors. You might not get the bonus of um, of a roof. Now the advantage of a roof is the fact that you could be, say there's two there, there's two here, it's not getting any points. But if I go for that, I'm suddenly getting an additional point because I can see an additional direction. Now, once everything's been placed out, so in this instance, not much has been placed out, um, scoring happens, but before scoring happens, we're going to make sure these buildings are able to communicate. Communication is around in, the, in these areas underneath the board, there are some little antennae so if I can just grab one, if I can feel one for a second. These are pretty sturdy, but as you can see, you've got to do it like that. Um, everything fits well in the box, so I've got to just lean. Let's lean and show you a bit. So there are things in here alongside birds, which I'll come on to. And now what you're going to do is you're going to chuck them on your antennae. And you're going to start based on who last placed. So if I can quickly do that. The way of uh, having these edge board bits is basically where you can grab your little piece for these four. So if I start, I would say, right, okay, where's the lard? Where do I can I see? If I can see it, I can put it on. So let's go for here. And then it's yellow's turn, and yellow could go here. Now I can also see here, so I could go here as well. Even though yellow's there, it doesn't matter, it's because I can see it. So yellow would be strategically advantageous for it to go here. Because if I've gone here, on my next turn, I could go here. But why not do something that we can both see? So they get extra victory points for being able to have the most arrows at the end of the game. In terms of scoring, around the edge of the board, you also have a score track. You have um, goals, which have got deliberately bent wings. They're all like that. And they give you three. I think they expect you some of them to break. They've never broken. I'm really surprised. But they just hang on the edge. Very weird. But it does work. You just do that, move it across. And then you just go, okay, you've got three points and it goes here. Sliding isn't necessarily the way to do it. It does look very effective. It is amazing how that, that does work. And you can place them out. So a winning score I've seen is about, I don't know, 40 something you can get in terms of victory points. Um, and you'll also be scoring number for um, being at highest in the area. So let me just cover off scoring again. So as you see a building, including a park, you're going to get one victory point. You can put an antenna in a park because I guess parks need to be notified when there's litter and stuff like that. So you'd score, I'd score, say, one, two, three, four, five. Don't score that one. I would then also score based on where I've got antennae. So say six, seven, eight. Can't see that one. So they've got eight points there. And then finally, have I got the highest skyscraper in this area? I haven't, so that would have been an additional three if I could get that one. 
So that's how the game goes out. Uh, my plan is probably to do a complete uh, run through of this just with other players and therefore you get to see the interaction, see where people go. As it is a swift game and uh, I think it's very enjoyable. People say it's very pretty when you see all these things laid out, especially when you have lighting. When you have lighting and it's not directly above, you do have a lovely shadow effect where you can see where these buildings are going. There's a slight shadow, it's not very visible presently just because I've got multiple um, spotlights on at the minute. but it is, it is very nicely set up and I look forward to bringing you some more stuff on Amass Games on the, on the Instagram page about this as well. There is some stuff I put out. So when you um, uh, start off, where do you want to start placing stuff? Of course, it can make sense to be placing something that is furthest away, but there's two factors. One is uh, your objective card, which might mean you might have to give up on it, or if someone's really going for a high building, you wait. Or of course, you could take two of your things and go, whoop, do you really want to mess with me? That kind of thing. I mean, that isn't a great thing because you're blocking off potentially five victory points you could get there. Okay, so in terms of uh, you know, what you could be focusing in on, um, I'll just take these things off as I start packing it away. Um, when you do start, so everyone does start with a park, as I mentioned, amongst a few other things, such as the two roofs. In the beginning of the game, you can see this is meant to kind of represent Manhattan. There is a green area here. The green is area is always Central Park. And I think, you know, not saying the moral of the story, but you'll be building up around it. That's a bit of a shame because it is going to get overshadowed already from east. You can see it's overshadowed. So in addition to that, there are these cards here. So six cards are drawn at random, and it's always orientated towards the south, I guess because you're, you're facing up from the south is how they defined it. So you can have the park like that, and you're placing out one of these foundations here. So based on my objective, I'm very happy with that. Let's do the next one randomly. So that's one. Uh, oh, another one. Two. And let's double check that is correct. It is. Another one over here, so that does help me a lot. Three. This is also is good. Four. What's helping that person out now? Uh, five. And six. My goodness. That seems uh, overpowered. Let's have a look at the rest just to confirm. No, yeah, look, that would have been up in the corner. That would have been there. This would have been up this direction, uh, in the south, in the south again, southeast, and southwest. So it's mainly in the south, so that's interesting why they're all uh, focused off in that direction. Um, so they mainly are, okay, for some reason it could be negatively affecting the southern players. I mean, I've never seen that affecting the game, to be honest. Uh, because as soon as somebody goes there, does South want to build up? Or do other people want to do this? Because if I'm in the North, I'm going to get zero victory points. So I might as well put at the very least one. It's scoring for East 2, but East is worried because now I could do this. I'm stopping them from getting more victory points, and it's stopping me as well. So there's some quite common sense here going on in terms of what you want to go for. And lastly, let me just show you this is meant to be uh, in the full game in terms of what it's called. You kind of chuck this together, which meant to represent some kind of boardroom seat. So you put this in here, the planning office, which I haven't used yet. Some games you can just like, Feast for Odin, you can play so many times and you can play it and only need to worry about using the basic deck. So this represents uh, his chair, his office. You've got uh, the secret vault. So this basically goes here saying, oh, what ought to happen? And you're hiding it. So if I had said, I think the best building is going to be here at the end of the game, I could get victory points. So it'd actually be secretly helping somebody which could work or might go against your card. Uh, this card can uh, make and break the game in terms of how well you get on. But generally speaking, the game is very close. And for the speed of play of what it is, I think you can achieve quite a lot in, uh, in the amount of time it takes to play it. So that is... Uh, the game which is called Skyliners, and let me just chuck that away, put everything back. So again, it's all colour coded, or at least it comes like that. It's you can get most of one stack in there. Put the other bits on the side, red for red. Um, I do recommend you keep the game sideways, otherwise pieces do fly. What is good is the fact that 
and you do put stuff on, you actually cover over. So normally these corners are visible so you can get your pieces for the antennae and you can get your birds. But when you pack it away, you do it like this, which covers them off and your pieces aren't gonna fall out because they're all interlinked. So they chuck around the majority of the foundation pieces. Just make sure they're all in the bottom bits. I think that'll do. Park, so one park for each one. Again, it doesn't matter too much as long as in each area. Chuck the lid on. And then pop this away too. So you've got your starting stuff. Let's leave that aside. And I've got the bag somewhere, which I put away. Again, I might take one of these bags away again, because I don't need two. The reason for having a nice wide bag is I think it lets the card stay quite flat. So again, these cards kind of don't go fully under there. You could put it under the box, which I found made no difference. Um, and then put the cards away, seal them up. They go flat. There is enough lip, to be honest. I think that's why they knew it was fine. Let's just go loose. And there are other games I bought when I bought this, including Torres, which won Game of the Year 2000. I haven't got Torres anymore. Uh, somebody else was really keen to have that game, so it's nowhere near me presently. I think it's, uh, if I can get it filmed, I will. And having played other games like uh, King Domino, I, I liked the idea of um, Torres. There's another game called Manhattan I still haven't played yet, which would be perfect to go with this. It was meant to be called my Tower Trilogy. But again, I keep games which people like in terms of uh, who I play most frequently with and one person in particular uh, didn't like Torres too much and uh, I was ousted. But this is Skyliners. It's 988 grams and I hope you enjoyed checking that out. If you have any questions, if you're keen to see that uh, full game, I'm very keen to bring that to you. There's a few things you might spot in the image, such as you've got a I Love Meeples uh, cup on there and he's got some pretzels and uh, there's a tower over there too. So you might rec recognize something like this from the 1920s. And uh, yeah, if you like that, I am keen to hear your feedback and I look forward to bringing you more stuff. So if you do want to see the latest stuff, please support and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Thank you, goodbye.